things. How and when did the idea of nuclear winter uh, develop? Was it an extrapolation of like the year without a summer in 1816 when particulates? Um, well, from our point of view, um, uh, the Alvarez discovery of an asteroid killing the dinosaurs led us to work on um, clouds of debris in the upper atmosphere causing huge climate changes. Someone from the National Academy called me up and said, um, wow, why don't you guys think about nuclear wars? And uh, at that time, Carl was making contact, and um, which was a television program, and the last section of contact was based on the Drake equation and what's the chance of intelligent civilization in the universe. And so Carl thought that the number of intelligent civilizations should be very large. But since we hadn't heard from them, it must be that they were annihilating themselves in nuclear wars. So he came, he came at the nuclear war problem from the question of the existence of advanced civilizations and why weren't they contacting us. And he was worried about that and thought it meant we were going to annihilate ourselves. You know, I came at it from the death of the dinosaurs and seeing that as a similar problem and, and discovering from that provocation that there really was a serious problem there that in a full-scale nuclear war would probably kill everybody on the planet with the exception of a few percent of the population. And then those some kind of merged. When did you uh, uh, create your idea that it was the conflagration of the atmosphere that might have uh, killed the dinosaurs and everything that wasn't burrowed? Uh, well, the, uh, this is very interesting since we all live here in Colorado. If you go to a place where the um, geologic boundary is exposed, in, uh, where the dinosaurs died, um, well, let me back up a minute. In the 1960s, Harold Urey, who's a very famous scientist, published a paper saying that every geologic era ended by the collision of an asteroid or comet on the Earth. And it was published in Science. No one paid any attention to it. Vanished. Most people don't even know the paper existed. However, the Alvarez group accidentally, because of a summer vacation that Walter Alvarez was taking in Italy, you know, took his vacation in Italy, and the people he was there with wanted to get rid of him. They said, "Okay, we don't want you bothering us. Go look at that cliff. There's this layer. That's where the dinosaurs died. It's everywhere in the Earth. What is it?" And um, so he went over, and there's this little thin layer of clay. You can find this in Wyoming and Colorado. You can go pick it up, uh, you know. And so Walter said, I don't know what this is. He sent it to his dad, who was a Nobel Prize winning physicist, and said, well, let's date it by looking at iridium in it. And so it, they, they tried to figure out how long it took to make the layer from looking at this metal iridium in it. And it turned out to be mostly iridium. Uh, so it, it, it either formed over an incredibly long period of time or it was a meteorite debris, and which is what they deduced it was. And so the interesting point there is that instead of just a bunch of speculations about how the dinosaurs died, they had data which showed that something had happened. And you know, subsequently people found the crater and various other things. And so you could take this layer of clay from the asteroid, you put it back in the atmosphere, and you ask how much light gets through it, and the answer is none. Not even a cat could see. Um, and so this is an obvious problem for the climate at the surface. Right. Um, there's no light, plants would die, that's almost what, certainly what caused the extinctions in the ocean is lack of sunlight. Uh, and then people look more carefully at this layer and in a lot of the layer are little spherules that are um, almost visible to the naked eye. And these things are micrometeorites. Uh, so what we also discovered was that um, you know, you know, if you go out in the sky and you see a shooting star, maybe you see one every 30 minutes or something like that. Well, when the dinosaurs died, there were 10,000 shooting stars for every square inch of sky. You know, so this immense cloud of shooting stars came in over the Earth from this collision with this asteroid, heated the sky up to a couple thousand degrees, and broiled the dinosaurs alive.